Damn, major elections are taking place all across the country. Tomorrow in Louisiana, voters go to the polls uh, to choose their next governor. Uh, the African-American who's running Dr. Sean Wilson uh, poll show, he is operating uh, second place to Attorney General Jeff Landry. But what is black voter turnout in Louisiana? Activist Gary Chambers Jr. joins us right now. Gary, always glad to have you on the show. Uh, you broke down the numbers more than a week ago. What do they look like today? Well, Roland, thank you for having me and having this discussion. Uh, we are looking like about 26% of the turnout overall uh, was black voters in early voting, uh, which is higher than what was what it was in 2019 uh, when John Bell Edwards won the governor's race, which says that black voters are paying attention to this election. We need that to be about 34% uh, tomorrow on Election Day. So we need people to, uh, before they go to Southern and Grambling and Southeastern for homecoming, to get up and go vote for Sean Wilson tomorrow morning, uh, because it really does matter what is going to happen in the future of this state if we get uh, Jeff, Jeff Landry as our governor. And, and look, and not just uh, those HBCU folks. Look, I tell people all the time, you know, there are 247,000 students at the nation's 107 HBCUs. 20% of them are non-black. You got 1.5 million black students at PWIs. So it's a whole bunch of black folks uh, who are going to, um, again, um, let's see, you know, LSU, going to uh, Tulane, going to all of these other universities, people who don't even went to college uh, out there. And, and I keep saying to black folks, if, if we push our numbers to 50, 60, 70, 75 percent, we can decide the whole election. That's it. That's it. Because black people make up 34 percent of the state of Louisiana. We have 900,000 registered black voters in this state. And if those black voters activate tomorrow, uh, we will send Sean Wilson to a runoff with Jeff Landry, uh, and he is in a position to be uh, the first black man elected governor in the state of Louisiana since 1972. Uh, and the, that person was not elected. They ascended to the office from being lieutenant governor. So there's never been a black person in the second blackest state in America elected governor. And it's not just because he's black. He's the former Secretary of Transportation. He has a PhD. He's a former professor. Uh, he knows where the light switches are in the uh, state capitol, and he has a plan for how we make this uh, state safer, stronger, and better for all of the people of the state of Louisiana, not just some. Uh, what are you seeing in terms of on-the-ground voter mobilization? Uh, I I'll tell you, I, I, I put the word out to some people uh, challenging them and, you know, you, I haven't seen, um, you know, prominent national uh, black leaders going to Louisiana, holding rallies, doing events along those lines. Uh, and I even asked a few and didn't get a response from them. Well, what I'll tell you is the people that represent uh, us on the national level or who have represented us on the national level uh, do not make it seem possible for a black person to win. So when people around the country look to Louisiana, they talk to certain voices. We need to change the voices that we're listening to. A black person can win in the state of Louisiana. We need the resources and the mobilization, and we need you to activate the people that you know within this community. We can't reach everybody by ourselves. Everybody has their own sphere of influence, and we should use that sphere of influence to help this brother, not because he's black, but because he's black and qualified, because he has the skill set, the plan, the vision, and the ability to do the job. And so it is a disappointing thing sometimes as somebody who's actively pushing this. You know, last year I ran statewide. I wasn't, I'm not what Sean Wilson is. What is the excuse this year? This black man is the pedigree, has the ethics, has the plan. We should be putting all of our muscle behind him uh, instead of focusing on things that don't impact the livelihoods of American citizens. Uh, you said something that was critical a few moments ago when you said Louisiana, the second blackest state in America. People always talk about Mississippi, but they don't bring up that fact of Louisiana. Uh, and, and as you said, the numbers are there. 900,000 eligible registered black voters, they simply got to be activated. Uh, and I know black voters matter out there trying to do their work, but you also got the resources to make it happen. That's a fact, man. You know, the organizations that do the work here uh, work tirelessly. There's an organization in New Orleans called Voices of the Experience Vote. They do a great job mobilizing voters around the state. 
uh, but they need more resources. And the people that are activating and doing this work uh, need more resources. Lo Roland, we didn't have uh, very competitive legislative races this year, so we need the attention to be on these statewide races in order for Sean Wilson to be able to get over the hill. And listen, he's going to make it to a runoff tomorrow night. He's going to get the numbers. Black folks got to show up and do what they got to do tomorrow. I believe that they will get him to a runoff. But November the 18th, we got 30 days to ensure that he becomes the next governor of Louisiana. Otherwise, Louisiana becomes like Florida, like Texas, more radicalized, more against the progress of all people. Uh, and we don't need that. Jeff Landry's already suing currently in federal courts to block black people from getting a second majority minority district like Alabama just got. The Supreme Court said that we had to do it. And Jeff Landry, while he's running for governor, is fighting for uh, from us getting that second black majority seat. Well, explain that again for the folk who don't get it, Gary, uh, who, on, in terms of what Louisiana will be like under a Jeff Landry as governor. If Jeff Landry becomes the governor of Louisiana, we can be assured that uh, there are going to be conversations about education that we aren't that aren't about educating our children. We can be sure that there are going to be conversations about removing books from school. We can be sure that he's going to talk about AP African American Studies because Jeff Landry is much like one of the last Republicans that we had as our governor. He's going to be focused on trying to be the president of the United States while he's governor. And so the Republican Party is at a point where in order to be the guy, the next guy up, you've got to be the most radical person in the position that you're in. And Jeff doesn't have a problem with that. He sues over every cockamamie idea that he comes up with that strips away liberties from people, that limits access. This man just sued to try to prevent people from getting health care in the state of Louisiana while he was running for governor. That is not somebody that we want to actually have the ability to have the uh, veto power. Uh, right here in Louisiana, the governor has a power to line item veto. That means the governor can look at anything in the budget and line item veto that out. We need a governor that's going to work against the, the ideology that is stripping away our liberties and somebody who's focused on the right things. Jeff's going to waste our time. He's going to waste our tax dollars. And he's going to put us in and make us a laughing stock of the nation. We already ranked number 50, Roland. We don't need to be worse than we are. You, you know, um, a lot of black people. See this, see, this is the thing for me in terms of how I believe in connecting the dots. It's a whole lot of black people who come to Louisiana every year for Essence Festival. Essence Festival is not just the largest economic engine in Louisiana. It's the largest live event in the country. And so here's my, my whole point to black folks who are all across America. Don't just come down to Louisiana for three or four days in July and not realize that you can have an impact putting those same type of resources behind the black guy who's running for governor and then he's running the whole state. And, and that's the thing that's, it's, it's the hardest thing for me to when they talk about 350, 400,000 people, uh, 450,000 coming, being a part of Essence Festival. Well, guess what? All of those Essence Fest folks should be saying, how do we make this brother governor? Let me tell you why that is significant and why it matters. Essence, like any other festival or any other uh, the Super Bowl, when those things come, the state incentivizes those things to come. Just recently, in a joint uh, legislative committee, uh, they blocked a health care district, the legislature blocked a funding for a health care district in New Orleans, okay? Why is that significant? They are working against anything that is happening in New Orleans because they're saying that crime is high. They're not helping address the education issues. They're not helping uh, make the city stronger. They're just saying, we're not going to give you any state dollars for anything in New Orleans if we don't like what your crime plan is, because that's what we have the power to do as a Republican legislature. What do you think is going to happen when the funding for all of these things that are culturally important to black people are up for the legislative uh, people that are under the thumb of Jeff Landry? They're going to work against New Orleans. They're going to work against Baton Rouge. They're going to work against Shreveport. When you look at the, the, the headway that we have made in getting investment into these communities, the resources that Congressman Carter has brought in, the work that's been done over the last eight years with John Bell as governor, we wouldn't have Medicaid expansion in Louisiana if black folk didn't elect a 
Democrat as governor. When John Bell was elected, he was elected with 700,000 votes. Of those 700,000 votes, over 450,000 of them were black people. And so he would not be governor if it were not for a majority black people vote show, showing up for him. So we have to have that same energy and tenacity for a black man. And if you are on the national level and you care about these things, if we don't get this man in, some of the things you enjoy, you may not enjoy as much. We're talking about the Louisiana election tomorrow. African-American voters could play a huge role in the election uh, of the next governor. Uh, you've got uh, MAGA Republican Jeff Landry, who's leading in the polls. you got uh, former head of Trans transportation secretary in Louisiana, uh, Dr. Sean Wilson, uh, who is running second in the polls. Uh, they are positioned to be the two candidates uh, to go to uh, the runoff, taking place on November 18th. Gary, the key is, again, uh, no candidate is going to get um, a majority of the vote there. And so the top two, because you have a jungle primary in uh, the state, the top two vote getters, they advance uh, to the runoff. Uh, and I think part of the problem with not just African Americans, but also your white Democrats across the country, is that they have this attitude, especially these white consultants in coming out of D.C., Democratic Governors Association, DSCC, DCCC, DNC, all the different people, they think, you know what, the South is lost. But that's a lie. You lose because, one, you don't run. You lose because you don't put the resources behind. And so if you look at the numbers, there is a pathway to victory if folks, again, would put the dollars where they are needed in order to run ads, hire staff, have uh, GOTV, GOTV efforts to be on the ground. That's how you do it. It's absolutely how you do it. I think that when you look at what the investment is, the candidates that are running in Louisiana, you know, are not raising the millions of dollars in comparison to what we saw in Georgia. But what you saw in Georgia is when you make the investment, the possibility of a victory is there. And now there are two Democratic senators from the state of Georgia that are helping save democracy right now. If we didn't invest in that state, then you would not get that turnout in that state. If you make the investment in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, you'll see different outcomes. And as a result, you'll have different democratic outcomes for the people that live within those communities. But we have just abandoned it and then it just said, oh, it'll turn around. You know, and, and Roland, I, I normally wouldn't do this, but I'm just going to call it out. Where is Cedric Richmond right now for Sean Wilson, right? When we talk about the national level, if Biden isn't supporting Sean, if the, the people at the federal level aren't supporting Sean, it's probably because Cedric Richmond isn't helping create that conversation on a national level for the people of Louisiana, for any black candidate that's running statewide. Uh, hey, that's a damn good question. Uh, and it's also one, for, again, for the DNC uh, as well. Uh, Matt Manning, uh, uh, civil rights attorney at Corpus Christi. Matt, uh, welcome to the show. Your question for uh, Gary. Yeah, first, uh, good good afternoon, brothers. I want to say, Gary, you know, I got to push back on something you said. You said earlier you didn't think you had the right pedigree that Dr. Wilson does, and I think you do, because I think you have broken down the issues here masterfully and spoken very directly in a way our politicians don't these days. So I hope that you continue seeking office because we need brothers like you in the good fight. My question for you is this. Um, I know John Bell Edwards before uh, did better than a lot of the other, you know, Republican, because he's a Democrat, of course, Republican candidates in Louisiana, and that he won the strongholds that you would expect in New Orleans, Baton Rouge, and other places. But what is the polling looking like for Dr. Wilson in the non-metropolitan parts of Louisiana? Where does he have to do particularly well? What parishes to uh, get over the hump when he comes out of this primary? Well, thank you, brother, and I'm going to keep pushing. Uh, I will tell you that... Uh, Sean is doing great in Baton Rouge, New Orleans, and Shreveport, but there's still Lafayette Parish, Calcasieu Parish, uh, Evangeline Parish that he's got to do well. Uh, he's got to do well in Slidell and Hammond and uh, areas of central Louisiana, like Rapids Parish, where Alexandria is. Uh, he's got to be able to turn out black voters in all of those communities, progressive, forward-thinking white voters in those communities. Uh, up in Monroe, uh, they've got uh, a lot of black folks in Monroe, Louisiana. There are places in Louisiana that people have never heard of that are full of black people and full of uh, forward-thinking white folks who want to see things different in this state. There's just not the resources to activate a lot of those people. But where Sean is going and having conversations, people are responding, and I think they're going to show up. And, and right now, black folks have shown up 
3% higher than they did in 2019 for John Bell. Uh, that's not a whole lot, but that is an encouraging thing, which I hope that more people are going to take it serious and get up in the morning and go vote. Because, you know, if you look at what has happened in Louisiana, you know, John Bell and I have had our share of uh, disagreements, but I recognize that having a Democrat as the governor of the state of Louisiana has saved us from being as radical as other Southern states. Uh, and I know that we could go even further with somebody like Sean Wilson in the governor's office. Uh, and see, you know, before I, before I go to Michael, and I think this is, and, and I normally, I, I normally don't, uh, I normally don't uh, call some of these fools out. But you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead uh, uh, and do it. As a matter of fact, you know, let, let me just look right here for a second, uh, because uh, you know what? Let me just do this here. Michael, ask your question. Then I'm gonna come okay. back and I'm gonna throw a name out to get his Gary uh, throwing names out. I'm gonna ask a name because it's a lot of people who run their mouths on YouTube and social media about politics uh, and, and they real quiet about what's happened in Louisiana. And I got one person I'm gonna ask Gary about in particular. Michael, go ahead. Hey, Gary, thanks for coming back on. This is uh, extremely important. Uh, earlier, you mentioned uh, uh, the first uh, black governor of Louisiana, you said 1972. I think you meant 1872, PBS Pinchback. Uh, Correct. Number one, I'm sorry. Number, no, no, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, number two, um, last week we had Omar, Omari Hosang on from Black Voters Matter. And one of the things I brought up was the Louisiana State Constitution of 1898 and how it's still uh, impacting politics today in Louisiana and impacting the conditions of African Americans. How do you connect? the state constitution and the history of that state constitution being put in place to uh, disenfranchise African-Americans politically and oppress them. How do you connect that to where African-Americans are today? Brother, Louisiana needs a radical transformation in our state legislature as well as a constitutional convention once we get a uh, sensible legislature. Uh, we haven't had one since the 70s, but there, you know, we were one of the only states until a few years ago uh, that allowed uh, you to be convicted with 10, yes. 10, of, 10 out of 12 jurors, right? Uh, it was 9 3 originally. It was 9 3 originally correct. based upon that state constitution. That was something I was going to get to, but go ahead. And then we have uh, right now so many laws and policies. We still have slavery in the state constitution. We, we still don't want to take slavery out of the Constitution. We put that on the ballot last year. It didn't pass, right? That we just aren't decent enough right now to just say, you know what, let's take the word slavery out of the state constitution. Um, this is a, a real issue uh, that a lot of citizens don't recognize on its face, but what the government says on paper matters because when the government says something, they apply that to your life. And if you don't make them change what that is, then at any point they feel that they can uh, directly or indirectly impose that will upon you. Right, right. Um, Roland, do you have a question? I just wanted to interject something. Go ahead, that, go ahead. Uh, Okay, so for everybody who doesn't understand, when the Louisiana State Constitution was passed in 1898, it had a clause in there that stated that for many felonies, for you to be convicted, instead of it being a unanimous vote uh, by the, a jury of 12, it was a 9-3 vote. They did this specifically because if you had, uh, because they could, because African Americans could serve on juries based upon that state constitution, they did it to reduce the power. If you had three African Americans on that jury, they did did it to nullify that vote. So th this is a deep history when it comes to these state constitutions. They're directly impacting us today. The more we understand those state constitutions, the more we'll realize why voting strategically matters today and how laws and policies shape every aspect of our lives. People are still in jail from it right now, brother. There are people who are convicted on 10 to 2 convictions, 9 to 3 convictions that mm -hmm. should be retried, should have the opportunity uh, for that evidence to be reheard, that are still serving in Angola Penitentiary right now, which is one of the worst penitentiaries in this country uh, and really on the face of this earth because it's just a terrible place. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was built on a, the uh, land that was a former slave plantation. That's where it gets its name from. Mo the majority of those slaves came from Angola. That's where it gets its name from. All right, then. So, so I'm, I'm going to do this. No, again, normally I ignore... Uh, the simple Simons, Gary. 
but this is a Louisiana race, and so uh, I'm just curious. Have you have you uh, seen or heard that loud mouth ass Jason Black, uh, who's in Louisiana, who's always go, no, go go to my YouTube page because uh, like so like last year uh, this little idiot did this thing called Pull Up Summer 2022, which was pretty stupid because he claims that I was running from him in, at Essence Fest, uh, and he's so irrelevant, the fool don't even know I was there the whole time, uh, and he couldn't even get credentials, uh, but I was all over the place. But it's interesting, I see him, all these, I don't see nothing on here about Louisiana gubernatorial race. Nothing. So I get a kick out of these people who love talking black, who love talking about what black folks should do, who love talking about what other black people should be saying and not saying, and he's sitting there in Louisiana, ain't said nothing about the black guy running for governor, but I'm sure he probably gonna try to call him a sellout like he tried to call you one and everybody else. But I, I purposely just believe in calling these folks out because what they do is talk trash on YouTube but do nothing to actually help black people. And if you black and listen to that fool, you stuck on stupid too. You know, Roland, we have a real problem with figuring out how do we collectively advance our people. And a portion of that problem is that some of us uh, speak so much against black progress uh, that we don't contribute anything other than that to black progress, uh, which is not a contr contribution of any value, to be honest. We have a real opportunity where we can turn things out. And my struggle with all of the people who uh, kick back, and this is for the foundational black Americans who say uh, that we uh, should not push some of these candidates, you got to get somebody in there to move your agenda. Yep. And if you can't convince people that your agenda is important, you got to build a bridge big enough, a, a, a boat big enough that you can cross the river of struggle. Because black folk tired of struggling. They tired of sitting in conditions and communities that are not working. And the way that we advance that is by putting people who share the majority of our views in office so that we can get things done. And then if those people are not doing what we want, we don't put them there again. But I didn't see many people for, for that were running for the U.S. Senate last year that had a majority black staff that paid majority of black people with the resources that they raised, $1.3 million, uh, that kept reparations as a part of their platform, and I still was not getting the support of those people. So it's almost like when you're black and you're running, are you ever good enough for black people sometimes? Because you say, I'm not gonna vote for them just because they're black. When they're black and they got a college degree and a PhD, you got a problem with that. When they're black and they are activists and they are advocates, you got a problem with that. The question is, is the white man's ice cold? Mm. Uh, and again, since I've just gone ahead in there, same thing, loud mouth Vicky Dillard. All they do is run their mouth. And again, you got black folks who run it. This is for the governor of Louisiana, second blackest state. On here, I see her talking about Kamala Harris, dogging Joe Biden, saying Clyburn sold us out, uh, saying uh, DNC chairman flees if the black Americans confront him, all this sort of stuff. I don't see nothing on here about the brother who's running for governor. And so all I'm saying, all I'm saying to all of these uh, so-called super black people, where you at? Because, see, you can't keep saying you want this, this, this. To your point, Gary, well, who's going to do it? So let's be real clear. Je we know what Jeff Landry not going to do. We know exactly what he is going to do that's going to be oppressive to black folks there in Louisiana. And so, yeah, I'm purposely name-calling all these folks who run their mouths. They love doing videos about me, but it's amazing when it's time to put uh, the, uh, the, the, pe uh, the metal to the pedal, it's time to really get going, time to actually get folks elected who can speak to our interests. Ooh, they MIA. They in the witness protection program. Don't work for us, man. So that's why I tell folk, if y'all waste your time listening or following any of them, tell me what are they actually doing to advance 
the cause of black folks, because guess what? If you're not in power, you can't do anything. Sitting on the curb, chirping and yelling on YouTube does nothing. Are you mobilizing and organizing? Are you helping to raise money? Are you telling people to create phone banks? That's all I'm saying. What are you actually doing? And if you're not doing anything, then you ain't doing nothing for the actual liberation of black people except just run your mouth. Pull it, pull it, pull it up, folks. Er, the voting tomorrow in Louisiana, y'all. Polls in Louisiana open tomorrow at 7 a.m. They close 8 p.m. Central. Get your vote in. Don't sit here and go watch college football or go watch baseball or go sit here and go to barbecues and go partying or whatever. Make sure you vote. Voting is our power. And again, if Wilson advances to the runoff, we come right back on November 18th, but none of that happens if we do not vote. Gary Chambers, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you, bro.